Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you um, how to draw the tangle Crazy Huggins. The materials I'm using are I've got a three and a half inch nine centimeter square Zen tangle tile. I've got a Micron 05 in black. You can use any pen, any fine liner pen you want. A short length pencil to be graphite. Short length because it's easier to hold and a tortillon for blending. So I'm going to move the pencil and the torture onto the side. I'm going to go straight in with using our pen. And we start off by drawing um, some orbs. And we're going to create those crazy Huggins shapes. So I'm going to draw orbs. They don't have to be put in a grid. They don't have to be perfectly even. You can see I've done mine slightly on an angle. And now we're going to join them. And we're going to join them by taking off here and landing on this one. The same this way, take off and land. It's like creating um, some headphones. And now we draw an arc, a C shape over the top to join these ones. And we do a C shape going that way. And that is your first crazy Huggins or a Huggins shape. I'm going to turn my tile and I'm going to, these are my first starting ones. So I want to pop two more orbs. Don't make them too close. They don't have to be evenly spaced. It's a crazy tangle and that means it doesn't have to be in a square grid. And you can see you just keep adding these orbs and creating a crazy image of these lovely shapes. And I'm going to pop one here. This will be interesting. Okay, so that's the side here. Do the opposite there. And then I reverse that one there. And this one here. Okay, always turn your tile to make it easier. I don't want this to be too skinny here, so I'm going to move this orb down here. You do have to turn your tile with this one to make it easy for you to create these crazy hugging shapes. As I said, don't, don't make them too close so that you actually give yourself some space and can create these lovely shield shapes. I do one down here. That one could come this way. This way. And you can just gradually fill your tile or your piece of paper with these interlocking shapes. Um, it's a little bit addictive. Once you start, okay, and always focus on your pen stroke, on the process, just this line, this one right now, before you think about doing any of the others. I'm actually going to join this one. This is going to be quite a long, crazy hug and shape, but I like that. I can finish off this one. That gives me a long, wide top here. So I'm going to narrow it down a little bit. I'm going to bring that one in here. I'm going to pop this one slightly down there so it's not a perfect shape. Well, it is a perfect shape because it's the shape it's meant to be. Um, but don't, don't feel you have to go for something that totally fills the space that you've got. So you can see this one's going to be a little bit snug there. Oops. So here's the top, here's the side. So if I pop one here, I will get the side and I'll get the bottom. And by doing that, I create another one here. So if I put an orb here, I end up with those crazy shapes. 
so that's your basic first stone and um, everybody's will be different okay so now we're going to add an aura so find a crazy hugging shape and we're going to add an aura on that inside curve aura and on this as well so go around all your crazy hugging shapes and add that inside aura i tend to keep my tile in one place just at first to do all the ones that I can see that are in the same direction. So these are all the ones that seem longer and standing up. Then I can turn my tile and I can do these ones. And you're just going to keep adding those auras and each aura, focus on it. Just think about that aura at that time. I've actually got my window open here and you may be able to hear the birds outside singing. I didn't think that was a bad thing um, on a recording. And it's not a disruptive noise. And as you add these auras, you will see that it sort of gives your tile a little bit more structure just like with all entangle allow it to develop in front of your eyes don't think oh no it doesn't look right you haven't finished it yet you haven't finished it and actually okay so looking right yes it has an importance for us you want it to be nice but don't go for it has to be exactly this. It has to be perfect. You'll never get perfect. Nobody ever does. Okay. And it's a little bit overrated. Okay. So now where you've got these end ones, you're going to have to do an aura all the way around the orb. And take it in. This one all the way around the orb. And over the top. This one's going to be a little bit close and it will probably go off the tile. That's fine. And here, so that whole process of drawing, it's why I tangle. Um, I'm getting asked uh, about how do you, you know, how do you compose a, a tile? Compose implies that it's got lots of planning and that just doesn't happen. Okay, with Zentangle, you follow the Zentangle method, you follow the eight basic steps and what happens is that your art will appear believe me okay so you've got your huggins shapes we're now going to add an embellishment in the centers and these are open to all sorts of embellishments but i'm going to give you a very simple one today and that is we're going to add some very narrow triangles reaching almost to the center almost and ink those in so they're nice and black and then in the middle you're going to pop a little dot okay so i'm going to go to here i'm going to do a really nice thin triangle and another one So you can see I'm doing the same direction at the moment. All of them are going to have this. This is a very simple embellishment, but it really impacts and it makes the hugging shapes look really different. And if you don't fancy doing this, then do uh, do something else. You know, if something speaks to you, if you're inspired to put something else in there, please just do that. Um, Zentangle isn't about copying exactly what the teacher or the person sharing is doing. It's about your creativity and what you can do. And I will always champion that and encourage you to explore your own creativity. 
And if something works, it works. If you think, oh no, that didn't work too well. What have you, what's happened? You've learned from it. You've learned and you think, oh no, but I learned from that. And maybe next time I'll do something different. Um, so whatever you create is always going to be good enough and is always going to give you a chance to learn. Okay. Now I've drawn this tangle like this probably hundreds of times and often times I will I'll just do it on a, a spare tile or in my little sketchbook. I've got two or three of those lying around sketchbooks and it's not about creating a perfect sketchbook it's about having something handy that I can just pop some tangles in when I've got a moment. I don't do it for anybody except me. Okay, I'm now going to turn my tile. Can you see what's happening? Don't they look cool? And So be logical, turn your tile and then you can keep your hand in that same direction. And you don't have to overstretch. I'm using this, this is a very, this is a new, brand new pen and it's lovely and juicy and I can actually see the ink wet on the tile and then it sinks in as I'm inking in and dries and it's that mindful moment of just being aware. I can also, over the sound of my birds singing outside, hear the nib of my pen on the paper and it's just being focused and aware of what's happening in this precise moment that makes Sentangle so special. One more to do. Just down here. And now we go and we'll do a little bit of shading. Okay. So let's change and put the pen to one side and I get my pencil. So the shading we can, oh, hang on a minute, I've just noticed one orb. You're probably all shout, shouting at the screen saying, oh, you've missed out a dot. There it is. Okay, so with the pencil, what we're going to do is we're going to enhance the look of it going underneath. So find a hug in shape and underneath that top curve where the base of that black triangle is, run your pencil the same on the bottom, where the triangle base is, you're just going to add some graphite using the side of your pencil. Get your tortillon, nice little circular motion, fix it in place and by that I mean you're, you're fixing those graphite particles into the base of your paper, into the surface of your paper rather. And then you're going to move your tortillon out just so that it blends. You might have to do this nice light touches so it goes from dark to light to barely there. Okay. Turn this way. Fix that in space, in place. Fix those graphite particles in place and then you can lift your tortillon, move it up to the outside edge. What you want to do is get rid of that harsh pencil line and you use a lighter touch and already you can see that that one is tucking underneath. So we're going to do that with all of them. Pop a little bit of graphite here and here. I'll do it on a couple of them. Um, and you can just get in a bit of a flow of using your tortillon or your pencil. Okay, so let's do this. Fix it in place. Bring that graphite out. Don't be scared of it. You know, if you add more graphite, you can always add more graphite. In Zentangle, we don't have erasers. Uh, and there's a reason for that, because if you have an eraser, you start aiming for getting things exactly right and then you get can get a little bit stressed out for it by it. Um, let's go with 
Right, I've drawn that line or I've popped that little bit of graphite down. Uh, that's where it's meant to be. Whether it's what you intended or not, that is where it's meant to be. Okay, let's fix that. I love doing this. I love doing a little bit of shading and seeing how it adds that three dimensions, third dimension rather, to what I've drawn. So today's video is, is all about the simplicity of creating this mono tangle of crazy huggins. You'll be able to hear my tortillon running over the paper surface. It's quite a nice little sound. It's not, I'm actually not putting a lot of pressure on there. It might sound like it, but I'm not. And you start seeing, can you start seeing what's happening? So I'm trying to do it so that I go across the tile so you can see from where um, where I've popped the graphite, what a difference it makes to the image that you can see. I mean, I love the two-dimensional ink on the paper. And, but once you start adding graphite and shade, oh boy, does it make a difference. Um, I can get lost in moments of shading and seeing what a difference it makes and there's so many different ways you can shade a tangle um, to enhance it to make it look different uh, and that comes with with time um, I am going to be making a shade with confidence class available very soon and that will be on video so wherever you are you'll be able to join me and learn some simple shading confidence. Okay. And just using the tortillon nice and gently, you get to a little bit of a, I am using the word flow quite a lot recently, and it is flow that you can just focus on this, just like you did with your pen when you're watching the ink and being aware of that. Just be aware when you're adding your graphite what what is happening and enjoy that process. There's that word process again. It's enjoying the process, not worrying about. Oh, look, can you see what is on this one or what is missing on this one? I've missed the dot again. How did I do that? There we are. It happens and it's not like a major disaster, is it? You just get your pen and pop it in, which I'll do when I finish this little bit now. And I've, I've often forgotten little bits and then I've seen, oh, hang on a minute, as I'm adding shade. And you just grab your pen and pop it in there. Okay, so I'll grab my pen and pop that orb in there. Oh, there it is. It's happier now, isn't it? It's not a little lonely hugging shape without an orb in there or a dot. graphite on these last two. You're taking your time and I hope that you, if you're watching it, that you can be inspired and maybe tangle along. You can stop and start the video um, and obviously you can watch it more than once. And Stop and start the video means that you can take your time, doesn't it? You know, that's the beauty of them. And I'd love to hear what what you think and whether you've had a go, what you thought, how you found it. It's all about sharing and being here. Um, I think that's so important. You don't have to be creating on your own 
it's lovely to be able to share and say, oh, this is what I've, I've done. Um, and encourage others. That's what I like doing. I like being able to encourage you to have a go. Have a go, have a go. And because I know that all of you can do this. Absolutely every one of you. If you can hold a pen, a pencil in whatever way, you can do this. It might not look like mine, and that's absolutely fine. I don't want it to look like mine. I want it to look like yours, because you'll each have your own unique creativity. Okay, so there is my crazy Huggins. I'm going to get my pen. I'm going to pop my initials. Well, it's not mine. It's for Zenjo, Z, and a J-O for Zenjo. And now, just take a moment to have a look at what you've created and appreciate what you've created. Thank you very much for joining me. Bye.